Hi guys, so this will be the last one of this. So basically what I'm saying is not everything here in is, you know, the creation fell, the whole creation. Um, and we were put out of the paradise of God because our eyes had been opened. Um, I believe we were put into a place that is like, he's because he says we're led to the sheep to as sheep to the slaughter every day so I think what's here and what is eating the flesh of humanity um, is not something we want to be with and when we get home we're going to realize oh my gosh and down underneath and the reason that everything's cracking and stuff isn't just because of their digging and all the things that they're doing the, the buildings that they're building is built out of sand and everything um, but the whole the whole um, thing is built on um, because it says that this is the earth is God's footstool. The new earth is not God's footstool. Let me give you an example. When you believe on Jesus Christ, your body that there's our bodies, which is earth earth, but there's the whole universe or the, or the earth that we're standing on, which is the earth that came up out of the sea, right? Came up out of the sea. So the earth, the field where God plants his garden and everything. Uh, so the earth is our heart, you know, our heart that we have turned away from him or we um, don't confess our sins to him, which is turning turning and saying, you know, I know that I'm wrong here, but it's not to get rid of sin, to re to, to um, remove sin. Jesus did that. Um, and that would be doing away with the cross if you can cleanse yourself by repentance. That would be saying that you can do it with the cross. Turning from sin to Jesus to be cleansed or to brother and sisters to wash our feet is different. It's a totally different thing. Um because we are not his footstool any, anymore. We are in him. So um, we will rise above the ashes, it says, and, and we will, we will um, not. So, so basically what I'm saying is, you know, it may be, it may be that, uh, that um, the earth, and everything in it, because it does get destroyed after he takes his his creatures, his new creation out, and all of the the things that he created, you know, the animals and the the um, the plants and all those things are re restored in the new creation, made new in the new creation, um, and the shadow world the darkness of all of it because you see plants and everything decay everything dies everything dies here and there everything lives and there's no more death or dying so you know for people to say that the kingdom of heaven is on earth they don't understand the kingdom of heaven is inside us yes when we believe christ comes in and makes it but the kingdom that we're going to be in eternally is not here. It's somewhere far away. And so, and how it all goes about and how it all happens, um, we're going to see very soon, very soon, because everything will be revealed at the very end. And, and right now everything's being revealed. I think we're pretty close to the very end. <laughs> I think we're closer than we were when we believed. Um, <laughs> So, you know, especially since this revelation of all of this dirt that's being, you know, dug out of the earth and been put up here. And that's why the Masons mean as above, so below, because I believe the fallen ones, the, the fallen angels are down underneath with them, shining light ones with them. And they tell them what to do on the earth in order to help them break free from their, their in prison, uh, their prison. But only Jesus can allow them to do that. And, but it, there, this is the time that it's happening in the physical. And it happened in the spiritual too. Um, <clears throat> so the things that are underneath there that they've created are probably some pretty wicked things. I can't even imagine some of their science experiments. I've heard um, people come up and have videos on some of the things they've witnessed. 
all of it may not be true, you know, but as far as the original DNA and everything that Jesus restored, um, that is re resurrected, but it's, it's new because it died. The old flesh died. He created new flesh, resurrected the old flesh that became holy. So he lived a holy life. He went in the grave. It died. All the sins died in that old flesh. And he resurrected the new body, which is holy because Jesus Christ was holy in all his ways. And so that's how he was resurrected. Quickening of the spirit. And that's how the resurrection of the two witnesses happen at the end too. And I, I've, I've given my testimony on, I think it's the father and the son and um, in us in the bodies of his believers and Israel. So the, I guess you could say church, which is Jew and Gentile, and Israel, which will come into the church later. But right now there are two lampstands, both on, on have light. One has everlasting life, light. And although the Torah that's in the people that are from Israel, they have an everlasting light, light too, because the words will never pass away. So that's, that might be the two lamb st stands, the, you know, the church that believes on the Messiah and the ones that don't. They both have light, truth, but one is in the, the new temple that did not sin, which is Jesus Christ. The other is in the broken temple that has sin because they haven't trusted in his free gift of grace of, that he fulfilled the law in his body by the Spirit and sanctified and justified us freely. And so they haven't received that. So they're trying, going about to make their own way, their own righteousness by keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. We rest in Christ, and then we live by the Spirit. And the Spirit moves us to living waters, moves us, and we know right from wrong because he put it in our hearts and all that. Um, and so the two lampstands, I believe are eventually resurrected into new life. Um, first, by faith, they're translated into the kingdom, and then whenever they die or whenever they see Jesus, they get the new body, or not, they don't They don't get new bodies. They, they see, I think they see their new heavenly bodies, you know, that God had made, the, the heavenly body um, that is incorruptible and, imper and um, immortal. Um, everlasting. And if you're in earth and, and you're living here and you've been translated into the new kingdom by faith, uh, you are the new earth. That's the way I'm understanding it because the old things have passed away, the old earth and all things pass away and you become new, right? And so um, er, all things have passed away and all things have become new. You're a new creature in Christ, um, something like that. Um, so you're the new earth that swallows up the flood of the of the serpent, all the lies of Hinduism, Buddhism, and all these things that the, oh, all of them ma mix in with Christianity, and that's the same thing. But you got to do all these other meditation practices and this and that, and that's listening to man and not to Jesus. That's other ways of getting a light other than faith on Jesus Christ, belief in the one that sent him. Um, that he came in the flesh. See, most of those people doing those other practices don't believe he came in the flesh. And that is Antichrist, according to the word of God, that he died for the sins. His blood is for the remission of the sins of the world. That's how we overcome, by the blood and by the word of our testimony, that he came in the flesh. Everything else is a lie. Um, his words are true and holy and perfect, and they will be everlasting. They judge those who do, have, do not have faith because he says they are judged because they believed not. If they are judged with the, with the schoolmaster and then they're turned to faith on Jesus, we were using the word properly and they were saved by the word. It didn't burn them up or condemn them. It turned them and said, hey, you are in trouble. This is what it says in the word. You need to reconsider um and so the two lampstands that i think you know 
come into one family, one household, which it, it says in, I think, Kings or Isaiah or so, somewhere, it says that in the end, Judah and Israel will be together, joined into one, and will be a, a, a stick in God's hand to smite the nations. So the way I see that, and that this is a couple different ways, is right now the saints of God, who are both Jew and Gentile, are um, speaking the word of truth, and all of these truths are coming to, to pass because the Spirit is moving us to know the truth. Because he said in the end times he would expose all things. He said he would uncover everything that was done in the darkness, that it would come to light. Now we are not judged the way that these others are being judged right now by God, by his word. We are sitting on thrones in heaven judging with God, using his word. And so that the um, the two had become one. The, the, the king, who is the law, Jesus, his head, is he is the high priest, right? And, and the father, the law, also, this law of the spirit in life, their words are like a fire to the enemy because um, they don't have faith. They haven't come to, to, to know who he is. And so we are resting in him. They are tormented by his words. <laughs> I've seen people, I speak a, a word of truth to them and they act like I have the pestilence or something. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I mean, they are just, they hated him without a cause, and you know what? Today they hate us without a cause still, and nothing has changed because we're in Christ, because we represent Jesus, because we represent Christians, or even um, Israel. Israel's hated too, just as much as we are, because we're, I think, the two lampstands. But the two will become one is also the new earth, us believers. We are also, and then Jesus in heaven, uh, the two the law, uh, heaven, new, new heaven and new earth are joined together, right? So they're smiting the nations, smiting the kings of the earth right now. <laughs> they're, getting, they're getting whipped, I'm sorry. And the church is getting whipped too because Jesus has taken the whip to the churches just like he took it to the synagogues. Nothing new under the sun. Everything's happening Um it's exciting. I mean, we should be joyful because we know at any moment we're going to see him. And I hope you're looking for him because those who are looking for him have, have wonderful things waiting for them and a crown of life already. And it's exciting. So, um, and Jesus is our crown. It's, it's so cool. But it, I think in Kings or somewhere, they were the two nations became one to make David king. Same way. The two nations become one. The two lampstands become one to make Jesus king, right? But Jesus is already the king, right? They just have to see it. And when he comes, they will. Because it will be with great power and great glory. And this whole earth will shake. Everything will shake because the bodies of people will shake because it says in the word of God, when he comes, the inhabitants of the earth will mourn and there will be no more trumpets. I won't be blowing the trumpet anymore. There will be no more bride or bridegroom. There will be no more body of Christ or his church, which is one, because we'll be taken into the kingdom far, far away. But we have hope for those who are part of the grapes of wrath. They are part of God. And, and he showed me that they are also the Gentiles that come in at the end. So it shows that until all the Gentiles, the fullness of the Gentiles. And that is interesting because that's the grapes of wrath. And it, they come in, the Gentiles, the heathen come in with the grapes of wrath. And then the second death, first their, their death, martyrdom, or like I said, stars falling from the sky, earthquakes, volcanoes, all sorts of ways they might believe um, until all of the, that comes in and then it will be the end. Um, 
and the, the 